Yesterday we studied the best way to get data into our hands. How do we collect data uh, based on who are we studying, our population, and how do we pick the people who we're going to ask? What will be our sampling method so that we avoid bias, so that we make sure we get a fair representation? The next couple of lessons are going to focus on what do we do once we have the data in our hands. Obviously one of the mo most important first steps is to understand it by organizing it. So we're going to talk about two methods today. We're going to talk about uh, tables uh, and we're going to talk about stem and leaf plots. Two ways that we can get our data from a long list of random numbers to a nice neat organized uh, way that attracts the eye and makes it easier to read. You've heard the phrase a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, this is kind of plays off of that idea. Um, so first of all, tables. <coughs> A table, remember, you're going to break it down into uh, columns and rows based on the different uh, groups you're studying in the scenario here. So here we have a guy who's riding the bus home and he's timing uh, his ride to school and from school. Our first task when we see this scenario is we want to break the data down into meaningful groups. So you'll notice here, I want you to, to highlight a couple things in your notes. We've got different days of the week. So we've got data for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So obviously, the days is going to be one of our groups. That can either be, um, that can either be the, the rows or the columns. doesn't matter. The other thing we have here is we have the times. We have two different types of times, right? We have to school and from school. So let's do this. We're going to go ahead and make a table. I'm going to cheat a little bit by using my straight lines here. Um, but we're going to have three days, right? So that means I actually need four rows. Well, that might not make sense, but think about it. I need three lines, one, two, three, for each day, and I need a top line for the titles for what each of these rows are. So you need a titles line, and you need... Uh, you need to have a top line where you you need a title line and you need one line for each of the different uh, each of the different headings there. So, go ahead and uh, finish this. You should be drawing this on your paper as well. And then we need to start thinking about what our columns are going to be. Obviously, we need one column. So I'm going to look, before we do that, let's go ahead and uh, let's name these different rows. So the first column here is going to be our days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's our first column. Now, we need two more columns. So let me go ahead and close this one off. Now I need a column for going to school and a column for going home from school. You see how we did that there? We, we broke the data down into its meaningful parts. And then we made different rows or different columns based on what those numbers are. So now, now that I have my table set up into the different groups, I can start taking the numbers from the paragraph and just putting them in here. It's pretty easy. So on Monday, to school was seven minutes and from school was nine. On Tuesday, five minutes to nine minutes home. And then on Wednesday, eight minutes to seven minutes home. Now, we are missing a couple of things here. First of all, anybody looking at this, this table and not seeing the paragraph, they're not going to know what we're actually talking about here. So one thing we'll definitely need is a title. Something that lets the reader know this is, this is what you're looking at here. The other thing we don't know is what is seven. Is seven hours, seconds, years, days, whatever. So there's two ways we can go about this. Either I can write uh, minutes after every number, or up in the top, I can put minutes, and that would mean that this applies to all those. I prefer to do this. Do not do both methods. Pick one. So you need to make sure your numbers are labeled. And now imagine I'm trying to figure out mean, median, mode here, right? So I'm trying to figure out what one number best represents. Well, this makes it a lot easier to, to put my numbers in order and just to kind of get, I could even from here kind of guess what my, 
my middle number is going to be or what my, my median is going to be. It looks like it's going to be 7 or 8 because 9 is like the highest, 5 is the lowest. So pick something in the middle, probably 8 or 7.5 even would be a good choice for the, the number that represents Jack's actual time to school. Okay? So tables make it much easier for the eye to read the data than this paragraph does. What we have to do, though, our task, uh, especially in class tomorrow, is going to be to read through the paragraph and actually put that data into those tables. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Stem and leaf plots. This is something you have done before in sixth grade. Um, <clears throat> the important thing to realize, there are a couple very important parts of this. Number one, uh, you want to make sure that the number of leaves you have down here is the number of data sets you have, up, data values you have up here. The other thing to point out about this, uh, I give you the four-step process here. Um, the stems, remember, are, are everything except the last digit. The leaf is the last digit. So if I have the number, this is something people get confused on them all the time. If I have the number 5,378, well, guess what the stem is? The stem is 537, and the leaf is 8. Everything except the last digit. You cannot have more than one digit as the leaf. Okay. The other thing that everybody forgets, and I want you to star this, is the key. This could be uh, $5,378, or this could be $53.78, or it could be... Uh, doesn't matter. I mean, the key tells us exactly how to read this. This could actually be 0.5378 uh, ounces, even. The key allows us to get rid of any decimals, get rid of any dollar signs, or anything like that, and, and simply focus on the numbers. And the key allows us, the reader then to come back and, and put those, those symbols and, and things like that in later. So here I have my, uh, my set that we're going to work with here uh, down below. So what I want to do first, as you see, is put the, put the values in order. Here we go. We got our stems would be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Remember the 114? That would be a stem of 11. So what we have to do now is we have to take those stems. We've got 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 110s. We're going to take those stems, and we're going to make our stem and leaf plot. <clears throat> They're right small so I can fit them all. Now, remember the stem and leaf plot also is going to show us any gaps in the data. So if you have a skip from 9 to 11, you need to put the 10 in there. The only time I would skip at all and go straight from 9 to the next number is if I were going from like 9 to 15. If you skip more than 5, uh, if you don't have any 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s, uh, then I think it's okay to skip. But really what I tell everybody, if, if you're only skipping one or two or three or four, you do need to show all of those numbers because that shows how spread out the data is. All right, so now that I have my stems, I'm going to come back in and add my leaves. For a 40s, I've got a 3. For the 50s, I've got a 7. For the 60s, I've got a 5. For the 70s, I have 2, 2, 3, 5, 6. No commas, guys. We don't need commas. They just clutter things up. Remember, the leaves, it's only one number to the right. So why put commas there if each number is its own number anyway? Uh, 80s, I have 1 and 4. 90s, I've got a 1. And then 100, uh, 110s, i got a 4. Notice, I just make sure that everything stays lined up vertically. That's one way to make sure it stays neat. And now I'm almost done. Uh, not quite, though. I need a key. For my key, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of take a snapshot here. I'm going to take a snapshot of um, specifically one of these numbers. So for instance, I'm going to take, and I'm going to focus in on, let's just say, the first 72 here. And I'm going to write that exactly as it appears on the stem and leaf plot. That way somebody coming in can say, oh, he took this 7 and 2, that's right there. So I know that when he writes 7 slash 2, that actually means 72. You can write the word means or you can write the equal sign. I don't really care about that. Where the key really is going to be important is when we have a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot. 
Back-to-back -back stem and leaf plots is when you have, uh, it's really helpful when you have two different groups of the same data. So here we have, um, here we have uh, U.S. representatives in 1950 and 2000. We're comparing the two different time frames. So what I'm going to do, uh, first of all, we're going to put this in order just like before, but I'm going to mm -hmm. keep these states separate. I'm going to keep 1950 separate from 2000. So for 1950, I have 14, 18, 31, 25, and 43. Okay? For 2000, I have 10, 15, 19, 19, and 29. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for both uh, years. Now, back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot is kind of like it sounds. We're going to do one stem and leaf plot on this side, and let's just say that's for the 2000s. Okay, our stems are going to go here, and then we're going to do one on the left side too for 1950. So our stems go down the center, and the stems are for this side and this side. So for 1950, the stems I need, looks like I just need one, three, oh, I didn't write this in order, switch those, one, two, three, and four for 1950. For 2000, looks like I just need one and a two. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in and I'm going to, uh, the one thing you got to remember when you make back to the back. Um, a lot of people mess up the order. All you need to do is make sure that you put the numbers in order from least to greatest as you move away from the uh, stem here. Okay, so for 1950, uh, we have, these are my two leaves, four and eight. Um, so the four is going to go closest because we're going to go 14, then 18. As we move away from the stem, we want our numbers to get larger. Uh, the next number then is 25 and then we have 31, and then we have 43. So there's the 1950 side, that's the hard one. Just make sure they get bigger, they go all the way out. For 2000, we have zero, five, nine, and nine. And then we have down here 29. Now, here is where the stem, or the, the key becomes extremely important. Because if I don't have a key, then I would maybe read this part right here as 41 and not 14. So I need to take one group of numbers from the left side and one from the right side to show how to read both of these sides of the stem and leaf plot. Don't have a key, we got this wrong. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write this exactly as it appears. Notice now there are two lines around the stem. If I don't, do, if I don't put two lines here, well, what's the stem? Is the five the stem or is the two the stem? So we've got to have two lines around the stem to say, hey, this is it. Uh, notice I didn't pick a one as my stem to use for my key because then that would look like just a series of, of up and down slashes like this. So this, I'm going to say, means 25. And whoever's looking at my drawing here sees, okay, the two is the stem, the five's on the left, so that's how I read the left side of the stem and leaf plot. I'm going to take my 29 then for the 2000. And notice now, again, two lines around the stem, whoever's looking at this sees, okay, that number is the leaf because it doesn't have a second line around it. So this is for the right side, and that's 29. 